Hi. I'd like to speak for a few minutes about a subject called bar chords. You've heard the term perhaps. Uh, it's a bar chord is used in all the fretted instruments, guitar, banjo, mandolin, ukulele, you name it. A bar chord is simply, and it's spelled B-A-R-R-E, bar, B-A-R-R-E, -E, is simply a, a method whereby you change the, essentially the tuning of the, of the ukulele or guitar by laying your index finger across a grouping of strings. For instance, a full bar chord would be when you lay it across, say, the second fret. That would be a bar. This would be your bar finger. Now, oftentimes I play a D chord where I bar the second fret and little pinkies up here on the first string fifth fret. Now that's not so difficult, perhaps, except you really do have to get that finger down there securely so you don't have any dead strings. And one of the best ways to determine whether you're getting a good bar, a secure bar finger, is to go uh, fourth string, then the third, then the second, and the first. And if all four are clear, then you know you've got to secure a bar chord there. If not, then you've got to do some adjustments. And let me talk about that for a minute. First of all, you need to drop your wrist. In almost every chord that you play on the ukulele, it's important that you not have your wrist up like this. Allow your ukulele to slouch down because what happens is that the fingers tend to flatten out. You want to keep your fingers nice and arched and curved. If they're flat, they rest against adjacent strings and cause them to get dead or buzzy. So keep your uke up, don't ever let it slouch down, and drop your wrist. Don't have your wrist up here. Another um, thing that a lot of beginning ukulele players do is they put their thumb on this side. You use your thumb, this part of the thumb, this part of the thumb, and the heel of your hand for support. But uh, less the heel, because when you do that, then the wrist comes up. So drop the wrist down. Now, when you're doing a bar chord, the thumb actually is on the back of the neck like so. so it's a support. It's like squeezing between the thumb and the index finger that bar chord. Now, if that is not clear, then what you do is take your middle finger and put it down and use it as a secondary uh, bar finger to get it stronger. Now, a little exercise that I have my students in my school do is we take, we start like at second fret, get a clear sound, move it up to the third fret, get a clear sound, move it up to the fourth fret, clear sound, fifth fret, until it starts to give way. And when it does, that means your hand's tired. Let it rest. Uh, do a little of this, loosen your fingers up. A lot of times you'll feel some pain right in here because this muscle in here is not strong enough yet. Over time and patience, perseverance, practice every day. If you practice these bar chords every day, within a week or so, you'll have a nice secure bar chord sound. Now, that's only part of the chord though. Say for instance, you wanna play a B minor chord. So you bar the second fret, the ring finger has to go over all four strings over to the fourth at the fifth fret. So you can't let this ring finger lay down. It's got a curve. And once again, so important to drop that wrist. Now, a lot of times when you drop that wrist, then the bar finger comes up. So don't drop it in an exaggerated way, but always try to keep that bar chord finger nice and straight. So get that straight. And sometimes adjusting the position here helps. Also, if you come up closer to the fret that you're pushing against, that can help too, rather than back here, but up closer to the actual fret. So there's your B minor chord. Make sure there's some air under here. You don't want this to lay down. If this is not curving, if this is laying down, you've got to strengthen that. And that does come with practice that does come. You, can, you will get a good clear bar chord sound, but you've got to practice your bar chords every day. Even if it's just two minutes, three minutes, you've got to practice it. And the beauty of these bar chords is, well, okay, you've got a B minor chord. If I move that up one fret, I have a C minor chord. If I move it up another fret, I have a C sharp minor. And these are what we call movable chords, these bar chords. Now there's partial bar chords too, and one of the most common is the B flat, where you're only barring two strings up here on the first and second string at the first fret. 
then the middle finger goes over here to the second fret of the third and the ring finger comes over to the third fret of the fourth once again you got to keep those fingers curved you can't have them laying down they got to be curved this finger has to bend down like so support from the back with the thumb B flat I would say there's essentially maybe three or four bar chords you really really have to know one is the D with your little pinky on the fifth fret of the first string the other is the B minor perhaps the C sharp minor and C minor they're all the same chord basically and the B flat now if you have the D then by moving it up two frets you have an E and I know a lot of people are having problems with E there's a way to play the E take your D chord bar it move it up everything up two frets up meaning towards the body of the ukulele down is towards the head of the ukulele so there's a few words on bar chords so the most important thing is you got to you've got to dedicate time to it every day of practice if you do like a whole lot of bar chord practice on Monday and then nothing again till Saturday you've lost a lot of it you've got to develop the muscles and develop the the um, the feel for those chords over a slow period of time but if you do it every day consistently I promise you within a week to two weeks you'll be playing really nice clean bar chords and then that word bar chord won't be an ugly word and you'll you'll love them you'll you'll be able to play so many more songs because your chord vocabulary will have increased a thousandfold.